everybody. Did you miss me? Hey, did you miss me? Uh, I'll come and sit with you in a minute. Yes, I will. Hello. Hello. Oh, you're so excited to see me. Come and sit with you in a minute. Welcome back. I'm going to do four flip cups for you today. I'm going to do them in metallic, just gold, silver and black and that's it. And I'm planning, if everything goes to plan, cross fingers, on doing a flip and dip. So four flip cups, tilt everything around, <clears throat> torch it, get some cells up. Um, then I'll wait a few hours. I won't keep you hanging on. I'll pause you and then I'm going to dip with a balloon um, and get some little fairies or fireflies. Hopefully fireflies because of the color scheme, black and gold and silver. I've still got quite a lot of this metallic paint left. So I'm going to try and use it up. This is Sargent Art acrylic paint metallic gold it's a lovely lovely gold and the same with the silver they're really bright and shiny sergeant liquid metal that one's not called that one's just called acrylic metallic but i think they're all liquid metal you can get them in little tubs as well so that's the silver one so black, gold and silver. The black I'm using is the Artist Loft only because I've still got quite a lot of this. I think I've still got about six bottles of this black left so I'll use it up. But you could use any black. And my pouring medium is my usual 60% glue, 40% water. And I've mixed that equal parts to the gold, silver and black. So I put 100 grams of pouring medium in each of my cups and I added 100 grams of paint in each cup. So it's the same consistency as my normal flip cup. Leaves a little mound. You probably can't see that. But leaves a little mound. It's hard to show you in a metallic because it leaves um, a little pattern anyway. So that's my consistencies. Now I've got quite a full cup here. So I'm going to put my oil in using my usual spot on treadmill silicone oil. And what have I got? I've got 200 grams. Um, I tend to do one drop per ounce or one drop per 30 grams. So I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five. Let's do five in each. You can do six or seven if you wanted to. Um, it would be between six and seven if you were doing one drop per ounce or one drop per 30 grams, but I've been using a little bit of less oil lately, so I'm sure it'll be just fine. <clears throat> now I'm going to do two cups with gold in the bottom, starting with gold, and two cups with silver in the bottom. So they'll still have the same colours in them, but I'm just going to change it up a little bit and see what happens with gold in the bottom of two of them. So you two can have gold. And then some black. And then these two can have the silver and then the black. I did a similar pour to this, oh, it must be almost a year ago now. It was very, very popular. It's had oh, hundreds of thousands of views. What am I doing? Yes, actually, no, let's start here. So I'm just going to go again. Um, and maybe improve on it a little bit because you know I've learnt a lot in the last year of pouring. All right, so those two have got gold, black, silver. Now these need silver, black, gold. So they're basically just reversed. 
and then we'll do another layer on top. All right, so back to the gold. And the black. And then these two need their silver. Following me, you don't have to do this. You could do exactly the same on all of them, but I just thought I'd change it up a little bit just so that each, you know, block isn't exactly the same. They may well look exactly the same anyway because they've got exactly the same colours in them, but hopefully they'll be a little bit different. Now this will be the last of my gold, I think, going in here. So each cup's got two layers of each colour. It's not a gorgeous gold. It just dries so pretty. Some of the golds just dry a bit bleh, and you think, oh, what was the point? It doesn't even look shimmery and shiny. But this one is particularly gorgeous. Oh, now, some more silver. So that'll be the end of the silver. Still got a little bit of black left. Mustn't have made my black layers very thick. Okay, that'll do. There's nothing more coming out of that. Um, so we've got two, four, six, I did three colours, 200 grams in each, that's 600 grams. Um, I might as well just put a little bit of black on the bottom. The black's going to be touching the canvas anyway when I flip it. So it'll just be on the bottom. Might not see much of it anyway because it's going to touch the canvas first and all the other colours will just sit on top of it. There's not much there. just wanted to use it up. There's no point in leaving a tiny little bit, is there? Uh-uh. Okay. Move everything out of the way. Make sure I keep them in the order that they need to be kept in. And let's flip away. They'll be pretty close to each other. Normally when I do this size canvas, this is a uh, 30 by 40 centimetre, which is 12 by 16. Normally I only do three cups. I just thought I'd try, try for the four. I didn't spray them with silicone spray. I just, I didn't want any extra oil. I hope I've stirred them enough that I don't get too many caterpillars. But if I do, that's all right. I will dip into them. I'm not sure yet if I want to use my balloon or whether I want to go back to my glove. I really like the, the softness of the glove. But uh, we'll see how it goes first. Um, what's the gloves I use? See, these, these kind of yellowy gloves are a lot softer than these ones. These are food preparation gloves. They don't really, they haven't got much stretch in them, the ones that I use for pouring. But these ones, these are more like balloons. They're really, really stretchy. Actually, they're more stretchy than the balloon. The balloon tends to be a little bit more firm. That's why I really like these, so I'll probably do that. I just I can get more of a bounce. Anyway, I don't know. I just get a better result. Okay. Oh, have I got paint on my shirt? I think I have. I've got paint all over my glove. It's alright, I've got my painting scrubs on. Righto, let's do this. I thought that one had the gold in the bottom. It's tricking me. Yeah, look, this one's got silver in the bottom. Oh no, come back. Lost half of it. No, not half of it. Look at that, I managed to keep that cell. I picked a cell up. It wasn't 
very good, was it? Dropping some off the side. Okay, I didn't want you guys popping up already, you cells. What do you think you're doing? If your mix is a little on the thin side, that's what happens. You get those cells straight away. So, um, what will I do? What will I do? I'll just cover uh, the surface and then I'll cover the whole surface and then I'll, to I'll torch to get some little cells up because I want the little cells. I don't mind the bigger ones as well, but these are going to stretch quite a bit. Might need a corner catcher actually. Just let me get one. The um, Sargent's metallic paint. It's quite a thin paint in here. Um, I have tried it at like two parts pouring medium, one part paint, and it was too thick. That was oh, a year ago when I did it. I had to look back on my video and see what I did, and I did equal parts pouring medium to paint. But maybe it could do with one and a half parts paint to one part pouring medium just to make it a little bit thicker so that I'm not getting those cells up automatically because I, I prefer to torch to get my cells rather than them just appear on their own. So if they're appearing on their own then it really says that your mix is too thin but oh my gosh look at the colours. I might not want to torch, uh, tilt, what am I saying? I might not want to dip, but I was planning on doing a flip and dip. But I might not want to after this. We will we'll see what happens, eh? I still may end up stretching everything out as I go towards the other end there. See how big they are already? I don't like you. No, I don't like you. So if I dip, you're the first one going. Big blobby face. All right, now to try and keep my cells as intact as I can. I'm just going to walk everything over. Left and right, left and right. Now you guys aren't gonna want me to, to um, Dip this, are you? Look at it. It's amazing. Wowzers. Can you imagine what that's going to look like when it's dry? There's a few cells in the middle there that have got a bit elongated, but most of them, except you. I don't like you. That is so pretty. Got a bit of a bend there, which is kind of doing my OCD head in. Alright, so now do I leave it and just say done or do I torch it and then dip? That is the question that I ask of thee. Oh, I'm just not happy with that. If I could get that off, I'd actually be happy to leave it. Let's try it. Weight of the paint to the middle, exactly where it needs to go. See the weight of the paint's going to push it off? If it works, I might leave it. If it doesn't, and I end up overstretching everything, then I will just dip it. Trying to bring my lines back. Okay. Oh, there we go. There's still a few cells in there that have been overstretched. I mean, you saw them at the beginning. They were there. And then as I tilted, obviously, they're going to get bigger and bigger. So this guy here, look, he looks as if he's got two little eyes there looking at me. Hello. 
So, um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. See, my cells, these cells are too big um, to be dipping. I really need a thicker mix. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this one as is and just call it done. Um, I'll just fix my corners and I'll call him done. And then what I'll do is I will make up another mix. And instead of being one-to-one -one with pouring medium, uh, I'm going to go and make my mix thicker so that I can actually torch to get the cells up so that they won't actually just pop up on their own because the mix is so thin. Um, the oil automatically comes to the surface. When your mix is thicker, it takes the heat to bring the cells to the surface. But when the mix is thin, they just pop up and go, Hi, I'm here. It's tiny. Because your, your mix is thin so the oil can just come up on its own. It doesn't need the heat to come up. Does that make sense to you? Right, so I'll leave it at that. I'm sure you guys will hate me if I um, <laughs> scrape it or dip it or anything like that. So let's just leave him as is. I will mix up another batch, make it thicker, and hopefully then I can torch and bring the cells up. They'll be smaller, and then when I dip into my cells, I'll have pretty flowers. Because if I had to dip into these now, they wouldn't be pretty. They're, the cells are too big. All right, I'll show you what I mean. I'll watch the next video, and I'll show you the difference. So I'm going to get you down for a close-up. And then I'll go mix some more paint, and we'll do it all again. Turn my light off. Okay, let's go down that close up. So when it dries, it will be really, really pretty. I'm just about falling off the ladder. <laughs> I've started wearing um, my thongs, flip flops, whatever you call them, in the studio because it's hard concrete floor and my my heels are getting sore. I don't want to get plantar fasciitis, so um, I'm just going to wear flip flops in here, but. I tend to get stuck on the ladder and just about fall off. Now, let me see if I can pick up any... I'm not really going to pick up any shine at the moment. We're just going to have to wait for it to dry. The cells are really pretty. Yes, I've got some blobby bits and I'm glad I got that one off on the side. But I'm sure the next one, with a little bit of experimentation, I've got those cells in the silver there will be better so let's we'll do that okay thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you for the next one and we shall flip and dip okay all right see you soon bye for now